Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and uh, we're up in the attic today and today I thought, I promised um, I'd do this uh, a while back and I said I would um, show you how to make uh, one of these uh, if you haven't seen this before this is uh, my um, composite RGB skirt switcher and the idea of this is it simplifies the cables you have to make to be able to connect your old vintage computers up to a um, a modern TV with a well a modernish TV with a skirt input on it like that and basically one of the major problems with um, some of the older computers um, you'll have to apologize for the noise because it's roasting hot at the moment and I've got to have the window up um, open up here because it is very very warm but sorry I'll get back to this um, yeah, one of the big problems of connecting your old vintage computers up to a uh, modern TV is that if it gives a SCART output, um, sorry, a, not a SCART output, an RGB um, output, um, SCART naturally, natively, um, expects a composite input. And you have to put a voltage on two of the pins on a SCART connector to switch it into RGB mode. Now, on some computers that like the um, Sinclair Spectrum Plus 2 and Plus 3, that's not such a big problem because you've got some voltage there that you can um, steal for that purpose to allow the um, sky connector to actually switch into the um, RGB mode rather than the composite mode. Um, some computers don't produce that, and you, like the um, Amstrad CPC 464. Uh, that doesn't have that. Um, you can um, get it by pinching some 5 volts from the um, power input with like a splitter lead and then reducing that down to get your um, it's 1.2 to 3 volts you need for that little switching signal but it's not an elegant solution uh, this is because um, basically all this does is it um, you find a 5 volt source from any USB that will give you um, some 5 volt power and um, that basically um, allows you to use this switch to switch between a um, composite uh, video signal and an RGB video signal. So it's dead simple. Uh, it costs under a fiver to make the thing. Um, and I'm going to show you how I uh, built it now. And then I'll just show you um, the built one working when we've finished. So let's get that out of the way. And first I'll just show you the bits that we're going to need to actually build this thing. Then I'll show you the um, circuit involved. So the first thing that we need um, is, well, it's not essential, but it makes the thing a lot neater. Now I picked this up from one of the local um, Poundland type stores, and it's a little three-way um, splitter box. Now we're not really going to use it as a splitter box, it's just a nice little enclosure to build this project in. And it gives us a um, female SCART connector, and it gives us a male SCART connector, which, which is what we need. I mean, if you had a two-way one of this, that would be even better. If you could get a one-way one, which I've never really seen in this um, kind of setup, that would be even more fantastic. But this was um, this was cheap. This was one pound fifty from the uh, local pound store, the local um, pound poundland bargain type store. Next thing I bought from the uh, local poundland bargain type store was just a. Um, this is a one point eight meter uh, USB A to A lead. And we're going to be uh, going to be using that to provide the power to the um, unit. Uh, well, you could have cut one off an old keyboard or whatever you wanted. I mean, I bought one because that cost a quid. But literally, you could cut that off any old device that um, is redundant, just providing you've got a uh, a USB connector. There are other ways you could do this. You don't necessarily have to use USB to power it. You could use a small wall wire to uh, whatever you want. I just find the USB. Um, idea is very very convenient. Anyway, um, I'll just stick them out of the way for a sec and let's grab a piece of paper and we'll show you the uh, the next bits that are going to be needed. Now we need um, quite obviously a switch. Now any switch that single pole single throw will do. Um, these are double pole double throw. Uh, it's, the only reason I'm using these is because I've got a load of them in stock but literally any single pole single throw switch will do absolutely fine for this so we have a switch when we're using 5 volts and we need under well 3 volts or under for this little project so what we're going to do is we're going to use one of these things now what we've got here is um, let's just read it off this is an LM but yeah this is the LM1117 um, and it is a 3 volt voltage regulator and basically what this will do you can put 
about between like seven up to seven volts or eight volts into it and um, it will give you a stabilized three volts output now this particular chip comes in various different um, versions this is a three volt version it also comes as a um, like a 2.5 volt version it comes as a um, I think a 1.2 volt version um, there's also a 3.3 volt version and I think a 5 volt version so you've got to be careful you've got to make sure you either get the 3 volt version or the 2.5 volt version now uh, it won't matter either way either of them will work fine to be f totally honest the 3.3 volt version will probably work absolutely fine we're only talking 0.3 of a volt but um, to be on the safe side stick with the 2.5 volt version or the 3 volt version which is uh, what I've got there now to go alongside that we need a couple of capacitors now what we need is um, that is a 100 NF which in old money is a uh, 0.1 UF capacitor uh, that is not strictly strictly necessary really because we've got a nice stable smooth 5 volt input but I'm going to include it anyway because um, really the technical thing to do is to put one of them on the um, input of these regs we also need a um, small value electrolytic for the output now anything um, over 5 volts will be absolutely fine for that that's a uh, 22 UF at 10 volts anything over 10 UF at 5 volts uh, will be absolutely fine for that but you only want 10 20 UF you don't need anything uh, more than that for there uh, the next thing that we need now this is optional you don't need these parts it's just um, it gives you a nice indication is a um, LED now that's a um, old school 1.8 volt um, LED and because it's a little 1.8 volt LED we need a, a bit of current limiting on it so what we've got there is a 50 ohm resistor now if you was perhaps using the 2.5 volt version of that you might want to go down to perhaps a, a smaller value um, I'm not really sure what's perhaps 30 odd ohms, 28 ohms, something like that. But um, for a 3 volt one with that LED, a 50 ohm resistor like that will be absolutely fine. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to draw out the circuit as we're going to um, build it here. If I can find my pen. Okay, now um, basically what we're going to have, let's see if we can do this. Let's, uh, let's move all the parts out of the way again. Oops. Let's try not to get them all over the floor. There we go, like that. Now, uh, what we're going to have, we've got our um, plus 5 volts there. Now that's coming from the uh, USB cable. We're going to have a, um, a ground as well, like that, which is also coming from the USB cable. So there's, let's imagine that's the end of our USB plug. Uh, so we've got 5 volts coming out of it, we've got a ground coming out of it to there, yeah? Have we got this in shot? Yeah, I think we have. I think you can see, basically see what I'm doing here. Right, um, so then we've got our little voltage regulator. So uh, let's draw in our little voltage regulator. That's uh, got three pins on it like that. Now, on the um, this particular voltage regulator, our first pin there is our ground pin. So what we need to do is we need to go from like that from uh, the first pin that goes to the ground right then our third pin here is our input voltage pin and what we want to do with that is we want to come with our 5 volts off the 5 volt supply and we want to put this capacitor like that there basically so we come down off the 5 volt line we put our uh, 0 0.1 or 100 nanofarad capacitor in line like that so that goes from the 5 volts line down to the ground and that cable comes up and around and that connects to that pin there so that's providing our 5 volt input to the chip there now what we need to do we need we've got our nice 3 volts then output here so we've got 3 volts there and what we want to do again here, that's what we want to use to switch everything. That's our switching signal there. But we need this capacitor here on the output there. Remember this is a polarised capacitor, that one's non-polarised, that can go either way around. But this one, 
it's got a positive and a negative to it now what we need to do with that is the negative side of it needs to go to the ground point there and the positive side of it needs to connect to our 3 volt output there so that is the basic regulation circuit and basically the switch I haven't drawn the switch in which is rather silly of me the switch there basically all that needs to do is that goes that goes in line there to switch the circuit off and on <coughs> and it's, uh, it's most simple that's all you need that's it that's your circuit done there um, additional to that if you like um, what you can do is we can uh, take that LED that we said before and we put a resistor of the 50 ohms there so that's 50 ohm resistor there we then put our uh, LED there and we bring that back to ground like that and all that means basically that's still got its 3 volts there we've got um, that's basically just uh, lowering the current for that resistor there but it just means that when we switch this circuit on so we switch it into the RGB mode uh, we get a little visual indication that it's in the RGB mode uh, by the LED light like I said it's not essential that but um, I did it on mine so um, I just thought I'd do it as an option like I said you can um, build the circuit and you can emit that bit there or right, if you want the uh, the visual indication sorry um, you can add that there so without further ado um, I'll leave that there just in case anyone wants to look at it um, without further ado let's get on with uh, putting this thing together so first things first we've got our um, our cheap and cheerful scar splitter so let's get the back off this let's see what we've got inside it in here now bear in mind that these are cheap nasty quality so you have to be quite careful uh, even just working on them but once you put it back together it should be reasonably robust it should be fine actually I mean um, I've been using the first one that I built for um, a couple of months now I've used it on a couple of um, my monitors in fact that's one of the reasons why I'm building this one apart from the video is I keep swapping it between uh, one monitor I've got up here in the attic and um, the one that I have on my test bench okay so we're in and let's see what we've got inside here well uh, obviously we've got the uh, plastic case and you can just see all three of the um, sky connectors are just uh, paralleled up you can see the printed circuit board running down there and what we want to do here is two of these wires goes to pin 16 and pin Eight, uh, sorry yeah pin 16 and pin 18 on the uh, strip boards here and we want to lift them two wires off this board so we can uh, use them so what we need to do let's just pop this out and we can figure out which pins go to which now on a SCART connector that there is pin 20 so we know that that one there is pin 18 and the one next to it is pin 16 so we turn this back over that means that we know let's just count this again yep there we go that's pin 20 so we look up here that's pin 20 there that one so we know that that there is pin 18 and that pin there is pin 16 now pin 18 is your negative and pin 16 there is your positive so all we need to do take these are probably the worst snips in the actual world I shouldn't be using these but uh, just to show you can do this with uh, I'm going to use some really cheap and nasty tools to do this job just to show that you don't need anything expensive to uh, do it so let's cut them two wires off making sure you've got the right ones so that's pin there we go hit that one free and we have to remember now because we need to put these back in the right places that one there you don't have to worry about the color code on these cheap cables as well it won't line up to anything you just have to remember which wire comes from where so that first one we've taken off there 
is our um, pin 18 and that's our uh, video blanking ground connection so that one there is our ground connection so let's just strip a little bit of uh, insulation off that while we can there we go so we've got to remember yellow is ground on this one like I said it might vary if you're using a different connector to this I think this even varies from the uh, last one of these that I did this to but um, that doesn't matter at all really and the next one if we go in here is a black wire let's just snip that off as well and that is our video blanking signal wire so that's our, what the one we put our little three volts on let's snip that off there we go so that one there is the one that we put our three volts on so it's a bit counterintuitive on this but like I say it doesn't really matter um, once it's all back together it's not going to make a difference that so let's twist that together so we can get a good solder on it and next thing let's move to uh, the next point which is going to be mounting the switch because what we want to do is mount this switch in here somewhere so we can use it and we want to mount our little LED as well so the, um, this isn't the best switch in the world they're a bit large you can get much much smaller and need to switches for doing this but it's what I've got it's what I'm going to use so what we need to do is locate the switch in here where it's not going to obstruct anything else so we need to make sure it's not going to obstruct the board and just try and fit the board back in there we can see we've got quite a bit of room around there it's not going to be too much of a problem to get the switch uh, mounted in there so what I'm going to use is I've got a uh, vintage um, battery drill this is the one that I use in my little workshop and I've got some uh, drill bits to do this and you've got to be careful drilling this plastic because it is quite fragile but um, it will drill if you're careful Let's, uh, that's in about the right place I think that's this way tiny touch Okay, that should be our uh, hole drilled through there for the uh, for the switch, and we need another hole drilling for the LED. Now, different size drill bit. We might as well drill them both at the same time, and then it's done. Now, if you pick the right size drill bit for this, you should be able to do it without having to use any glue to hold the. Uh, hold the LED and I did on the other one that I did so let's see. oops not quite through there there we go that's that through let's get the drill out of the way let's clear this uh, bits of crap off and there we go we've got a uh, oops can we see that we've got two holes drilled in there so the next thing we want to do is mount the switch get the uh, Mounting hardware sorted out. Let's move that up a little bit because I don't like seeing uh, too much of the shaft protruding. It doesn't, it's not necessary really. Because these switches are set up so they can uh, look quite nice. Now let's mount the switch in the hole. That works really well that. It's in the right place. Okay, put the uh, put the switch in position. Use some of these just to nip it up. There we go. And as we can see there, we've got the uh, the switches in position. Make sure it's nicely lined up. Don't like switches that are out of alignment. Now we've got our LED. Now an LED has a polarity on it. And there's two ways to tell the polarity on an LED. One is by the length of the legs. Basically the longer leg is your positive, the shorter leg is your negative. Now it's all well and good, um, providing the legs haven't been cut down, in which case you can't really use that. Uh, another way of telling is that most LEDs, especially the, well, the round ones anyway, have a flat on one side. Now the flat on one side indicates the negative of it. 
The other way to um, tell it is if you look inside the uh, LED, I don't know if you can see that, if you look inside it there's two uh, plates inside it, a small one and a large one. The large one basically is at your negative, the small one is at your positive. So there's a few ways of telling um, which way around an LED goes. But what we want to do is we want to stick that into the uh, into the enclosure. Let's get that bit of a swarf of plastic out of there. So we'll stick that in there, noting which way which way negative is. Now which way I'm going to stick it, I've made sure that negative I know is that way. So the flat is that way. I'll stick that down and what we can do is we can just bend that out of the way so we know which one's which. Right, let's get that switch slightly straighter. That's better, that's nice and straight now. We've had to leave a little bit of a gap at that side there because if you can see there's a grommet there, that has to just sit down in that little space there. So you've just got to make sure when you drill the hole for that that there's enough room. Obviously if you, this is if you use a ridiculously large switch like I have there. Um, if you use a smaller switch then obviously you've not got that problem. I'm not using the best switch for this um, project, I'm really not. Um, the next thing we need to do is uh, we need to get some power into it. And that is uh, what this is for here. And what we do, is we take our nice new uh, USB cable and we uh, snip the end off it like that. And so it only cost a quid. And then we need to strip back, perhaps, I'll yeah, perhaps perhaps four centimeters, five centimeters of the shielding of the uh, plastic insulation. So let's just uh, get that about four or five centimeters of the outer off. And then we've got a foil insulation inside that. Let's get rid of that. There we go. And what we want here are the red and the black wires, that's all. We don't need the insulation, we don't need the ground or anything. All we want is the red and the black. Because that's our um, ground and our um, plus 5 volts. So we can snip the rest of that off there. Let's get rid of that, because it's not needed. And that is our um, input wire. And what we want to do with that we need to find a way of getting that into um, here and what I usually just do is on this side here let's take the uh, snips and just uh, oops not the best on this one but uh, I just snip a little bit of the uh, of the plastic away like that you probably better with a file or something like that but basically we just uh, nibble a little corner of the plastic away on that side put it together yeah and we'll do the same here Let's take out a little bit of the plastic like that so you could do this with a, a, an exacto knife or whatever they're called or a, um, a scalpel blade or something like that I'm doing this really rough and ready it's not the best way of doing it but I forgot to bring a uh, blade up to the uh, attic with me and I can't be really bothered to stop the camera now but there, yeah, basically all we've done is we've just made a little um, hole there for the cable to go through. You know, I don't know if you can see that. We've just made a little uh, little hole there for the um, power cable to go through. Okay, now next thing we need to do, we take our uh, power cable. We need to see how we're going to route this. And what we're going to do is we're going to decide that that there, um, the, basically the ground leg of the... Uh, of the LED down there is going to be our ground point and what we're going to do is we're going to snip that a bit short now we've pulled it down let's just uh, get hold of that, pull it up a little bit it's great to work on, we'll cut that short like that and that down there is where all our grounds are going to go we've got our uh, our cable here. Now we've got what we're going to do is we're going to cut the red one a bit shorter. We'll strip that off. These really are awful um, snips, you know. We'll uh, leave the ground one a little bit longer, but again, we're going to just strip off some of the insulation on them and we'll twist them together so we make them nice so we can solder them. Like that. Oh dear. And the red one on this switch we are going to put to this centre pin there. 
like I said this would be different if you were uh, using different different switches to me but that really doesn't matter just twist that round like that and let's get a little bit of solder let's solder that in position So that's the first wire in position there and that is to our 5 volts line that's our power there next thing we want to do we take the uh, black wire and just to make this easier we'll just uh, we'll just pop the oops we'll just pop the LED out again for a second and we just want to twist oops let's pick that up that's being awkward we just want to twist that black wire round the ground wire for the LED like that Ooh. sorry a little bit warm a little bit warm today next thing we need to do Our other uh, bits that we now need to go to ground. So we want the negative leg of the uh, capacitor here. Bend that out. And what that needs to do, if we sit that basically, if we sit that on top like that, we just twist that round doing it like this to keep everything really quite nice and neat and tidy so we've got our capacitor there that's connected around there we've got our tiny tiny little capacitor sorry we'll start with the resistor next now this is the resistor for the LED sorry Ugh. Sorry, not resistor, capacitor. Uh, I'm struggling a little bit with the heat, if you haven't um, imagined already. I'm, uh, I don't do very well with the heat, and this is uh, incredibly, incredibly hot up here at the moment. Anyway, let's just solder these. Um, let's solder these in position now. Okay, so all we've done there is we've soldered the LED, the ground wire and the uh, ground from that um, electrolytic capacitor together now what we want to do is we want to take the other uh, capacitor let's just uh, tin up one of its legs and that just needs soldering to this as well and we can literally just blob this on like that okay just put the soldering iron down for a second so we've basically we've got the LED we've got the capacitor the capacitors sorry all connected down to the ground line now the net there's only one more thing to connect to the um, ground line and that is the uh, yellow wire from here but I don't want to connect that to that just this second or do we let's have a look now Now we will leave connecting them to to the last minute until we've got all this uh, basically in position. So what we need to do now is we can snip off. In fact, we can put that in position in there. And I'll tell you what, I built my own of these, and I didn't film it or anything. And it's a damn sight harder to do this a second time round narrating what you're doing than it was when I built it the uh, the first time I'll tell you that anyway we've got that basically all that is hidden in there now we've got our uh, LED coming up there so what we want to do is we need to take our uh, our resistor just 
bend that just once round the leg of the LED. Like that. And let's push that right down because we want it basically as far down there as we can get it. Let's give that a quick squeeze down like that. And this oh, it needs to go down a little bit further. Like that. I'll take the uh, take the soldering iron. Oops. Solder that in place. Like that. Okay, now that is soldered in position down there. We can snip off that wire. Can snip off that wire there. Like that. Basically what we've got here. That resistor will feed the 3 volts to light the LED and what we need to do is we need to install this next now this is the uh, little three point the little three volt regulator and what we need to do with this you don't have to worry about a heat sink for this at all um, they even do this in a smaller package and that would be fine we're virtually pulling no current whatsoever it's just uh, it just so happened to have some of this these in stock that's the only reason I'm actually using this particular type um, right so what we need to do we've got our ground is this pin here so that ground pin needs to go and connect with the other ground that we've already got down there. So we've, I'm personally, this is how I bent it to um, do what I wanted it to do. Then I bend the next pin, which is the um, input pin, all the way up. And the output pin, which basically we want to go to that capacitor there and that there so bend that up and what I want to do now do how did I do this last time sorry that way around I had it yes there we go that's is how I did it I remember now so there's a bit of fiddling about involved here, but basically what we want to do is to snip this leg down. What we want to do is get that voltage reg. That's still a bit long that. that goes in there like that so you could probably do this a lot a lot better if you had a bigger enclosure but the whole point I wanted really was to make this in a really small neat enclosure so we solder that on there like that we can snip off where we're short in there now Just snip that off there Tidy that up there, a little bit of thread, thread from the old uh, thing. Now what we need is that first, so at this capacitor here, we need to connect to that there. So, we need a little bit of wire. Anything will do. I've got a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of scrap wire here. Let's uh, see if we can strip this off. Okay, so that's one end of the wire stripped. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to tin that bit of the wire up. Like that. Oops. I 
think this is a bit of a network cable or something like that. It was just something random that was lying on the desk. Because anything will do for this. Like I said, it's nothing, uh, it's nothing fancy that we're making. Strip the other end while we're here. shot I? I'll just finish this solder point and then I'll, uh, I'll move it so everyone can see what I'm doing right now let's get another piece of solder and what we want to do is uh, we just need to put a little bit on the end of that capacitor that 100 NF capacitor that we installed before like that we take our uh, take our wire get in there and get that, tighten that on there. This is full on like dead bug, squash bug construction. And that's connected on there. Like I said, it won't win any uh, any design awards but that's not the intention. It's intention to get a nice functional uh, little unit nice and easy. So let's snip that like that. That's connected down there quite nicely. We can bring that round. And all that needs to do is just solder onto that uh, first pin. So let's get that round there and let's just uh, solder that on with that one there that we did before. Whoops. Well, it hasn't done my soldering iron much because I've just got um, I'm using an ancient old bench supply that I built when I was very young up here and uh, I've just managed to get some of the toilet paper I was using to clean the soldering iron off into the fan on the top of it but never mind it's eaten it so it should be fine Okay, that's not the neatest bit of soldering I've ever done, but uh, let's see if we can get that a little bit better. There we go. That's better, that's nicely soldered on there. Get this. I think I've got the soldering iron uh, wrapped around with what I'm working on, that's why it's being a pain. There we go, that's the soldering iron disconnected. Right, there we are. So. Uh, so far we've got the switch in position, we've got the voltage regulator in position, we've got the first capacitor connected up, all we need to do really is we've got the second capacitor um, to connect up to that line there, we've got that resistor there to connect up to that line there, and we've got the grounds to connect up which just need a soldering uh, together, and then we can reinstate the board, we can solder these into position and that's pretty much it. Now let's start with, let's start the ground out. So let's move this out of the way there. Hopefully this should be long enough to do what I want it to do. Which is just bend up. We'll bend that one out of the way a little bit. And we can bend this one up. Yeah. And all we need to do is just solder them two together. ground soldered up so that is our uh, ground point there and that is where we're going to connect the ground point from this this is why we didn't connect it before so all we need to do now is we need to connect that resistor there to that point and we need to connect 
that capacitor there to that point. And probably the best way of doing that, if I take the lead for the uh, capacitor, I bring that up here, and I twist the capacitor and the resistor together at that side over there. So let's get that up there. Let's twist that round it. Like so. Right now. solder that in position just like that let's take one of them legs off because we only need one of them and then all we need to do is if we uh, bend that down we want to connect that basically. All we need to make sure is that we don't have anything here that's going to liable to short out. So we just need to make sure our positioning is pretty good. So we'll bend that capacitor this way a little bit, like that. And we can make sure that that's in a nice position. We will push that down like that. Because I'm happy with that in that position there. And then all we need to do is basically we need to solder that lead there to that. So we'll bend that round it like that. Now you could use a bit of heat shrink on these um, legs here or some insulation if you so wanted. It may be a good idea. I'm quite confident when this thing's together, nothing's going to move, nothing's going to short out. But uh, so that's your own personal preference if you wanted to go a bit further and put some. Um, Perhaps some heat shrink or something on these. Let's solder that one in position. And while we're here, we're just going to add a tiny touch of tin up that top of that one, just like that, because that's our ground point for the other connection. Now, what we need to do is we'll just snip off the excess from there like that just snip that down a little touch that should be okay right next we need to put the board here back in this is a slightly tricky bit because we've got to get that in there and then we've got to get all these wires around what we've just um, what we've just done so let's get that back in its position let's just move that out there for now and that was me just burning myself on the, the end of the soldering iron. Yeah, I think you all saw that nice and live on YouTube just to show that we all do it. And what we want to do there, remember what we uh, said before is that the yellow one is our ground wire, the black one is our, uh, our switching wire, that's our signal switching wire. So let's tin them two up. Let's uh, put a bit on the black one, like that. Do that off, put a bit on the yellow one, like that. And then all we need to do, we take the black wire, and the black wire needs to solder into that middle pin there. Just to solder that on there, like that. Perfect. And then we need to take the yellow wire, which is our ground wire, and we need to solder that onto the end there, which is our ground point like that and there we go now all we need to do is uh, reassemble it so if we take our USB wire push that down to that side like that take this wire and all we really have to do is just gently feed this in fact, what sometimes is good is there's a bit of excess insulation in here. It's just peel that little bit of excess insulation off, give you that little bit more room. 
and then all we need to do is make sure you've got rid of any of this foil insulation as well sorry around here because it will short out what we've just done so let's just get rid of all this crud here just to make a little bit more room so let's just snip into there just pull off all this that we don't need that might short on something or take up a bit too much room so we've got rid of all that yeah that's better let's get this back in there now like that get the wires a little bit fiddly this bit like I said if you was to use a bigger uh, a bigger Skype connector Skype box you probably wouldn't have quite as many issues as this but I like the really neat nature of this thing that's why I, uh, I did it like this and so it does take a little bit of faff and fiddle to get that back where it should go but it it goes in there as you can see like that with all the modifications in there and we take the uh, the back box sit that on there like that Can just get all this to sit in and see that it clip back together. Get the screws in. I don't believe how hot it is here. There's actually sweat running down my face. I've got the windows open. I've got a little fan running but even so it is so hot today it is ridiculous but anyway basically there we go that is uh, how I built or how I build my um, Sky composite to RGB switcher and that's all that really is to it there's the uh, the switch there's the LED And all I use to power it, oops, kick the camera then, is uh, that's just a, I think it's off an old mobile phone, it's an old mobile um, phone charger, but it has a, a USB socket on it. And all we need to do is give it some USB power like that, plug that in, switch on, oops, that was me switching the light out, switch on and as you can see LED is on that means it's in RGB mode switch it the other way and then it's in composite mode so it really is that simple well I hope you uh, I hope you enjoyed that anyway like I said I, uh, I said a while ago I'd um, show you how to build one of these things um, hopefully you can follow that if you have any questions or queries about it, please uh, get in contact with me. I'll see if I can um, elaborate any more. Um, I know that was probably uh, probably not too easy to follow. It's the first time I've ever tried doing like an instructional video like this, showing something that I've actually put together. But uh, hey-ho, if you enjoyed that, could you uh, please let me know? So uh, I think I'll leave it at that anyway. Um, so thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.